What would you say, Mike, to uh, anyone who's contemplating... Don't do it. ...painting their don't boat themselves? Don't do it. 100% don't do it. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Nisha. And we're renovating a 45-foot narrowboat and turning it into a tiny, floating, off-grid home. In this week's video, we hire a tunnel so that we can start sanding and repainting the boat, but the tunnel isn't as waterproof as we think, and it starts leaking rainwater over our fresh paint job. We also do a scary thing and cut two big holes in the roof, and we find 19 unexpected holes in the boat. As summer came to an end, we decided it was finally time to map out our ideas for the boat layout. I wanted a traditional layout, Mike prefers reverse. We both drew our ideas and decided that reverse layout makes more sense because we'd get more wall space from it. So now that was done, we moved on to the next jobs on our list. Sanding, priming, welding and repainting the boat. about to head to the boat really excited because today is the first day of sanding the exterior of the boat oh, and I just can't wait I can't wait for the color to be gone and for it to be painted in gray oxide and then I can put the top coat on and it's just gonna be it's gonna be great <laughs> it's gonna look like an ugly duckling for next <laughs> couple of months before we get a top coat on it. So yeah, that's what we're doing. in blue. But it to be still when it's filler. Filler. And there's a dent here and it comes out and it goes back in again. It's only a thin amount of filler. But yeah. Pain in the butt. And that's why there's a gap there that fits here. Really nice because this goes in. Yeah, you can see it when you look down, you can see it really badly there. It cups. I mean, actually, probably leave that. I might be able to fill that. for two weeks so that we could sand and paint the boat without getting rain on it but we're also having some welding done while we're in here so we grinded the ends of these rails off because they were totally rusty and we had those welded then Mike cut two squares in the roof where the old chimney hole was and also where the boiler hole was 
We were told it's easier to weld a square than a circle, that's why we cut the squares over the circles. So now that they've been welded up, we can move the chimney from where it was, which was a very awkward place, and put it anywhere that we want, and simply just cut a new hole for it. Twelve. One, two, and three, four, five. It's oh. one there. Huh? Uh, you know when Six, you put your hand down and yeah. it's like bigger than yeah. <laughs> in front of the camera than you expected. <laughs> but yeah, that there is, is silicon. And there's and more over here. There were a few more that were like that too. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, that's not 14 holes. Really? Technically, it was 15, but that one's a bit plugged. Just on this side oh, of the boat. And then 16, but this one's got filler. It's been done properly. So. <laughs> the joys. We found more holes on the other side of the boat, so 19 holes in total. We expected a few holes for wires and things to have gone through, but not 19. We're not quite sure why 19 holes would have been needed. It makes sense though, why some of the areas, particularly where the holes are, some of those roof areas were way more rusty than the rest of the roof. So some holes had silicon or blue tack in, but we decided to just get them welded one of many surprise welding jobs this boat needs. And then when we need to screw a hole in there uh, for wires or something, then we can, but it definitely won't be 19. having your coffee because it looks a bit smaller than it's not oh no. i've got my lemon set thank you very much that is such a yuca mm. thanks mum just so everyone knows michael <laughs> puts names on everything <laughs> everyone should have their own cup he's got me two mugs with my name on them and a flask that has Misha <laughs> all down the side. <laughs> After sanding the boat, we decided to paint it with a coat of grey oxide because that just shows up dents in things much better so that we know which areas need filler and spotter. And as you may have seen, we also left some sections of these sides and top of the boat unpainted so the welder could lean on them. We aren't sanding the boat back to bare metal because we only have two weeks off of work and in the tunnel and it would take a lot longer than that if we were going right the way back to bare metal. So our aim has simply been to get the boat back to being smooth.
filler on the two squares that were welded on the roof because they'd kind of dipped a bit, I'm guessing because of the heat. That wasn't really a problem though, the problem arrived when it started raining. The tape didn't do much so thankfully there was an employee on site and he cut up two big plastic bags that we could put over the boat until they could put this big condensation sheet up the next day. The two big bags did stop the majority of the rain going on the boat thankfully and we were given a free day in the tunnel so all in all it worked out okay but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't stressful at the time. ran out of grey oxide and the only place that had the same one was one and a half hours away so I set off to get it and when I got back Mike had made huge progress. You've just started sanding up. Mm. You've been busy today. And I've ground half the front up. What on your face? My face. <laughs> I'm working. Looking like a coal miner. Yeah, done this side. So you fillered all of this side. Check you out. Productive today. Trying. So what have you done on this side? Oh my word. Wow, that's uh, a lot of stuff the front. then. I've been here's a lot of stuff. Okay, I'm down the front. Ooh. Grinded the floor. Yeah. But it makes up, that's the dust. Yeah, I can see that. Wow. So to keep it it looks better though. It, mm, like yeah. the part that's grinded. Mmm. It's, it's come up my arm shot. You want to sit down and eat? I'll wash my face. Uh, it's funny because I have my mask on. I have my glasses on. You had your glasses on? My glasses and my mask on. No, it, just doesn't... it doesn't look like it. <laughs> and you've got a big like black piece here in your beard. <laughs> oh. Well, you know what? It's just proof of hard work. Yeah, I have been doing so. You've done well? Mm, we're getting there. I'm annoyed by that. Is it that bad? Yeah, you got like a big dark bit all around your chin. <laughs> That's called a beard? Just your goatee area. Oh, maybe that is just your beard. <laughs> Does grow thicker in certain places than others. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Exhibit A. Yes, note to self. She sees you enough but doesn't know anything about your beard. Mm. Just two, you got like just two dark patches here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it might have been genuinely while I had the mask. It could be. And Mike is so dirty oh, from today's work. Look socks. at this. Some socks. <laughs> that I sock had a line. Yesterday. Wow. I literally have a line. A t shirt on. You do. But the funniest thing, I'm sorry, is those ankles. <laughs> With just one to two days left in the tunnel, we set to work, you guessed it, sanding and priming. Until someone told us we were making a big mistake. 
So, last night we undercoated for the first time the roof, the, the roof of the boat because we got told that um, we can't leave it in primer because primer is porous, so, so we can't leave it outside, which means that the water would be sucked up. Mm -hmm. So we've had to put an undercoat on it. So we didn't finish till 5 to 12 last night. We're shattered and we're broken this last couple of weeks because we've been this that was the 12th day uh basically the full full 12 days yeah we've been working on it so today's the 13th day um mm. and we're tired but basically we put the we rolled a little section on tipped it off with a brush rolled another section off tipped it off or laid it off with a brush all the way down the roof and the poles as well and it looked nasty it, the way it was joining together it's basically like a really thick version of gloss slash enamel I think it is enamel um, it looks nasty it looks bad it's given us a good idea of what the roof would look like with the colour that we've chosen but it looks really nasty um, come in this morning really nice top layer is really dry really lovely obviously underneath is not it's still curing but it's really nice but the finish is not <laughs> Um, where it joins is not that great. It's got loads of flies in it, like loads of flies in it. Even though we're in a tunnel, of course we did it at night, they're all attracted to the lights. Mental. Um, and basically we've both been incredibly disheartened from it. Um, so we're back today, we've had the morning, I say we had the morning off, we didn't have the morning off, we had a little bit of a lay-in. And then we did the Q&A video, which is probably up by now. So we've basically what we've done is we spoke to the painter guy last night and he said that we can mix some of the undercoat gloss into the primer that we already had. Um, so we've mixed that and we've just gonna tr we've just tried it on a small little section about this big at the front of the boat um, just to see if it reacts or not. So we'll go and have a look in a second because it's been about 20 minutes. Um, so we'll know if it's reacted or not. If not, that means we've got plenty of paint to carry on doing the sides which would be really nice and actually they'll hopefully they'll look a little bit better and be more protected against the weather when it goes back out because today is our last day here. We've just asked the guys here if we can stay till tomorrow, um, which will be Sunday, um, because it needs time to dry. Because we with the weather, I mean today has been the best day since we've been coming here, but the last week has been torrential rain. We've had thunderstorms almost every night. Um, and of course we're painting, so the atmosphere is not great. Well, not the atmosphere between us two, <laughs> I meant the atmosphere as in the Earth's atmosphere has not been that great. Um, because of obviously thunderstorms and the... the um, all the rain. All the rain, that's the moisture and everything, it's been a bit crazy. And hot and cold, hot and cold. I mean, yesterday was so cold at 12 that we could see our breath. So, I mean, all of a sudden it suddenly dropped from that massive heat wave that we had to this. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get both sides of the boat and the back and the, the bow and the stern done today yeah. in the undercoaty glossy stuff that we've got and we'll see where we go. But yeah, we're not, we're not happy with the way it's laid on, but the only consolation we've got from this is that it's the first coat of undercoat and we're probably going to get three, maybe four coats of undercoat yeah. on it. We're going to do as many um, as we can. You know, as many as we can, and then two, hopefully two top coats. Whether we spray those, some of those, or whether we uh, roll them on them, tip them off, we don't know yet. Um, we have we, a friend who's yeah. got a sprayer who said he wants to come and help. Um, he's been around boats and did, did loads of work on boats and that, so he, he knows his way around. Um, we're not sure whether that, we'll have to see what happens with that, but we need to get a coat on it, so unfortunately we've got a roller it on, and we've got the small rollers, the 4 inch 100mm rollers, because it's the only rollers I've got of foam rollers um, this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, that's evening. another that's another thing that we did wrong last night. We did, we used a motion roller instead of a foam roller, because that's all I had on me. So it hasn't laid down the nicest, so for the sides, we're going to use foam rollers, and we've only got one each. And we spoke to the guys and the guy said you, because it's the first coat you can just roll it on you don't have to tip it off um so that would be so much nicer just to roll it on although we will have to cut in around windows round on the shelves and everything like that we'll probably do that all first and then roll everything together um we might what we'd probably do is just do a section and move on 
through it. Um, but yeah, that's the current situation of where we're at. It's it's my brain is hurting, and I'm tired. So I'm probably saying it in more words than I should. But that's our current situation. We laid the paint on. Paint wasn't great. We're not happy with it. But it can be sanded back and more undercoats applied, so it's not a lose scenario. What would you say, Mike, to uh, anyone who's contemplating don't do it. painting their don't boat do it. themselves? Don't do it. 100% don't do it. No, what I would say is make sure you get a proper tunnel. Um, make sure you do your research of your primer, your undercoats. Make sure you know what colour you're doing top coat so you can match it with the undercoats. Um, so obviously darker colours, darker. Primer. And get some help. And also get some help. Ask people. I mean, we didn't know until two days ago that we were meant to undercoat it before it goes out in the rain. Nobody tells us these things. So yeah, one of those things. just mixed primer and undercoat and we've painted both sides of the boat with that but because we mixed black grey and white you can kind of see we've got a bit of an ombre situation we've got this color fading to this one this one fading to this one and then I think that's it on your side my side has like five different colour changes. No, so. we did mix, we did put it all in one tin and we mixed the whole tin mm -hmm. together. So it shouldn't be a colour change, but unfortunately it is. I mean, overall, it's not that bad. And it's undercoat. Yeah. It's just to protect it while it goes back outside. Yeah. Um, still got the shelf on both sides to do. Yeah, we've and got. And underneath the sides of the shelf. This to do. Still we've got this, got this to, to do. do. And then we've and the got yeah. the back to do the as well. Stern, yeah. The stern, yeah. We quickly painted as much as we could of the remaining areas before moving it back to its mooring where it will sit for the next six weeks until we could take another two weeks off to continue painting and install the brand new windows. Um, yeah, we are hanging on. Hang on, hang on. Am I going? Yep. What are we talking about? Uh, explain the paint. What's been happening with the paint? Ah, uh, okay. Since we undercoated it okay. yesterday. I broke the step. You broke the step? Ow. Explain to them what you just explained to me. <laughs> Well, <laughs> how do you eat raspberries? Someone was moaning about they've got little bits of seeds and bits yeah, of Yeah, I hate getting them. seeds in my teeth with, from the raspberries, so but I love raspberries. What I say, <laughs> they're my favourite fruit, is what you do instead of chewing them, you just close the, your mouth and you push down with the roof of your mouth <laughs> against your tongue and it squishes this into little bits and then you swallow it. You don't get any seeds in teeth. Did, Did we explain that, by the way, on camera? About about how we were gonna put it outside in primer and we can't do that. I just said that at the beginning of the video. Did you? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was so Sorry. long ago, Sorry. I've Sorry. just forgotten what you said. All right, I'll have a little dig there, are we? If that breaks, I will laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Don't, don't, don't. You're gonna fall. 